Well, if you want, we can go ahead and get started yeah. and then you know, folks trickle in, they can uh, get caught up. Um, you feel free to keep your cameras off, but you're more than welcome to turn them on. Otherwise, Margaret and I are just gonna be hanging out with ourselves, which is fine. You know, we are uh, both high energy people, so uh, it works out to our advantage. Uh, I wanted to say thank you for all of you for joining us this afternoon. I know it's a, a ongoing a women's uh, summit or women summit on women in technology, which is one of my favorite events every year. There's so many great things that come through this program. Um, and this, this, this year it's like spread way out, right? It's like across so many days. I, I, I really like the, the approach, but if make sure you're in the right place, this is the Unleash Digital Creativity in the Classroom, a pedagogical upgrade via Adobe Creative Cloud Express. Um, so if you're in the wrong place, you can sneak out and we will only joke lightly after you leave. It's okay. Um, <clears throat> it's like the first day of class all over again, you know, I do this. So uh, my name is Justin Hodson. I am a faculty member at Indiana University Bloomington, um, where I am in the English department. Specifically, I focus on digital rhetoric as a scholar, but I'm also an Adobe Digital Literacy Thought Leader. So I do a lot of work with Adobe and I consult on behalf of Adobe attending events and talking about digital literacy, digital creativity, and digital learning in the classroom and what it looks like at varying scales. While I'm primarily focused on higher education, we do some K through 12 uh, outreach as well. Um, and so, but part of my role here at IU, right, is that I run the Digital Gardener Initiative or co-lead the Digital Gardener Initiative, which is a system-wide attempt to improve digital literacy uh, and integrate it into the classroom. Uh, and as a part of that program, that larger initiative, we have the Digital Gardener Faculty Fellows Program which is a semester long faculty development initiative to help faculty learn to develop strategies and tools and technologies and integrate these sort of practices into the curriculum so that students get a exposure to them firsthand. And Margaret, of course, is one of oh, you on this side of my screen, uh, is one of our, our champion faculty fellows in the inaugural cohort. Uh, and she has uh, gone through this fun Adobe workshop with, with me before. And so when we had the opportunity to present it back to the, to the summit, um, I thought, who better than to bring Margaret on to share all this wonder, wonderful stuff that you can do in Adobe Creative Cloud Express. Uh, Margaret, in case you are unfamiliar, is a senior lecturer in the School of Public Health, but again, it really a showcase beacon for our faculty fellows program, among other things. Uh, and I'm sure Margaret will take the time to introduce herself. But my role really today is to give you a kind of 10,000 foot view of Adobe Creative Cloud Express. Um, and then to kind of get out of the way and let Margaret sort of guide you through a number of options that are available within the Creative Cloud Express suite. And I'm going to start by actually, you know, sort of point to a couple of things. Um, first, Adobe Creative Cloud Express is a free web-based uh, tool. So anybody can use it, anyone with an email address. They do have some premium features, but if you are on an IU account and that iu.edu email address, you have access to a number of, uh, to most, if not all the premium content because we are enterprise uh, license. Second, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud Express used to be called Adobe Spark, so you may have heard it in that, that terminology before. Most re it changed recently because it became a more integrated suite of tools designed to help people express themselves, produce you know, a digital imagery, posters, flyers, videos, uh, websites, uh, and all kinds of wonderful things in between. You can do resumes and, and a number of sort of portfolio mm -hmm. options through the tool. It's a really uh, dynamic, robust suite of tools that now all work together. And the third reason why I love Adobe Creative Cloud Express uh, is that it's incredibly easy to use. Uh, so I'm, you know, by trade, I know the Creative Cloud pretty well. Uh, I work in InDesign and Photoshop and Premiere Pro and a lot of higher end industry tools, um, but I still use Creative Cloud Express pretty much every day. Um, on, and especially on my phone, I do a lot of this stuff mobile uh, on my phone or on my tablet, since, since it's so, uh, the, the, it's platform agnostic. It works the same, whether you're on a PC or a Mac, or whether you're on a tablet or a phone, you, you know, whatever, you can download the apps. Um, and in fact, if you have Google Chrome, you can download Adobe Creative Cloud Express as an app for your desktop um, through the, the Chrome um, browser. So there's a number of really wonderful reasons why it's accessible and usable. And, and again, that's sort of the, the framework. So I want to just kind of guide you through a few quick steps and then uh, turn things over to Margaret. Uh, so let me share my screen as best I can. I think it's on desktop one. There we go. Uh, move this out of the way. Hopefully you can see my little blue circle, right? Margaret, can you see me? Uh, the, the little blue yeah. circle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's making sure sometimes it doesn't show up. I'm on the wrong screen. And the next thing you know, we're all okay. So um, what was this? I'm not sure what that is. Okay, so the first thing is Adobe Creative Cloud Express uh, is a web-based tool. So you want to go to express.adobe.com. Um, and this will trigger the login or sign-in sequence. Uh, if you don't have an account of any kind, you can sign up. There's a, a series of ways of doing that, but um, sign up with email. 
Um, if you are on an uh, education account, though, like at IU, you can click login with school account and it will prompt, should prompt the, the sign in, right? So I'm going to, this is in the way, but you can't see it. So I'm going to sign in with my at IU.edu account. Now, granted, my email is actually at Indiana because I've been here long enough to have the at Indiana version, not the new IU one. Um, but this is what triggers the, the single sign in uh, for us. And you'll see this is the, the, the normal interface. Most of you should be, if you're at IU, you'll know this wonderful duo login process. Luckily, I've already logged in, so we don't need that. Um, uh, once you log in, it will trigger, it'll, it'll pull up the Creative Cloud Express main menu. Uh, and you can see it's, it's a template structure in most cases. So if you've never built an Instagram post before or a poster or a marketing flyer or a resume, they have preset templates that you can work with that are free and easy to use, uh, and you can just sort of choose among them. But the, the single best part of this whole tool is it's all plus button logic, right? So if you wanted to create something, click the plus button, and it'll give you your options. Um, it has a bunch of them that are considered the most popular among the wider users of Adobe Creative Cloud Express. And you can see we've got Instagram story or post, Facebook post. You can make a flyer. Uh, Margaret's going to cover the web page uh, later. You can do video, and this is quick tile-based voiceover sort of quick video creations. Um, if you go to view all, which is, you know, a lot of people maybe want more guidance and you can just, you know, sort by category. So if you really wanted to create a business card, they've got a bunch of them preset that you can create and quickly print. It's not um, really that difficult at all. It's all templated out. You just click around, but I'm an educator. So I like to have students build things um, often from scratch because it's way more fun than having them work in templates. And so, uh, I'm going to add the plus button again. Uh, and the, the part that really I appreciate about the new Creative Cloud Express, what they've done with it from where it was a Spark, is they've added a ton of these little quick actions, right? So if you want to convert something to a PDF, you can do it right here through Express. You want to edit the text of a PDF, you can do it. Maybe you have two videos on your phone, you want to make it one video. You can just drag them. Literally, you click Merge Video, drag both files in, it merges them, you send it out. Uh, convert to GIF or GIF, depending on your preference. Um, I do like that you can change speed and video and reverse video, and there's a lot of fun features there uh, that we don't have time to cover today. But perhaps the single most important one for me is remove background, okay? Um, I do this all the time in Photoshop, and if I'm doing a large design, it's not a problem. But when I'm on the go, I often just want like me without the crazy background behind me. Um, and this is incredibly friendly, user friendly. So I click the plus button, I go to quick actions, I click remove background. Right? It says drag and drop an image. So I have one on my desktop here that I've already got ready. And I can show you what it looks like beforehand. There you go. This is me in a train station. Uh -huh. uh, I'm thinking by Queens yeah, this time. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just going to drag it, click and drag it in. It's going to identify me in the photo. It's going to remove the background. Um, and now I can save this. I can download it as an image without a background and then use my floating body wherever I want. Or if I really want to, I can customize it and start to create my own kind of image designer poster. And so I'm going to take like two minutes. I'm going to show you how to do this, uh, this entire thing, right? So it's added me to this customize. I'm going to just make myself a little bigger, drag me to the corner since my legs are missing, right? Don't want people to think I have no legs. Um, I'm going to add a background just by on the left menu here, just by clicking backgrounds and selecting from them. <laughs> maybe, maybe we want uh, fun. Well, let's see what have we got here. This one, here we go. Travel sounds good. I'm going to pin it to the background. Okay. There you go. Now I'm in somebody's bedroom. Really creepy. Okay. Maybe that was the wrong choice, but all right. Fair enough. And then uh, I want to add some text, you know, welcome to Adobe, right? So we'll add this little feeling stylish one. There we go. I'm going to click it, just expand it. And now this one, it's got a, it's a, it's a, it's a visual graphic, right? So I can double click the word feeling and type welcome to, and since they're separate lines, I'm going to double click this one as well. I'm going to say express. Now, if I don't like the colors, I can just change them by clicking the color wheel. Maybe I want it to be, you know, I don't know. Actually, I have preset colors for my brand. We'll use that. Okay. We'll go that route. And this one I'm going to click as well. Change the brand color real quick. And again, you just kind of follow along because I'm very quickly tapping and clicking, right? It's not meant to be, uh, uh, hey, create this on your own yet. Uh, maybe I want to add a, a shape background, a little white behind it. And I want to make the white borders a little thicker so you can see it. I'll do the same with the Express uh, real quickly. In theory, I should get this done in about 45 seconds which is maybe moving real, real quick, but the whole point of this tool is to give you an opportunity to play with it. Um, and if I am done, I can see my image in full, right? Maybe I don't, I don't like the background. We're gonna remove the background and change it real quick. 
So I don't want to save that. I want to be in somebody's crazy bedroom. I, I got, oh, and I have a pillow in the way. Oh, it took the whole thing out. That's fantastic. Close that down. And find this one and just delete it. There we go. Um, we'll add a, a different background. Just maybe a oh, put in the purple hand. Oh, okay. You know, you you got me. Let's just pin it right to the background. Fair enough. That looks good. There we go. There we go. I appreciate the 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 assist. So if this is the image I want, I got two choices. I can share it as a web as a URL, so it's live online, or I can download it and then I can do with it whatever I want. Um, <clears throat> and it's all dynamic media, so nothing gets destroyed. Um, I can resize my image anytime I want. I can hop out. And now you'll see it's down here in my projects. So if I want to go back in and edit it, it's there. It saves forever uh, and all kinds of fun things. And uh, there are a number of key features that we're going to talk about today, but the quick actions and the, what they allow you to do that used to take uh, either te advanced technological skill uh, or you know some serious amount of time to know which workflow to go through. Um, now is just like two clicks. So converting a document to PDF, which you can do in most tools or most like Word, you can save as print as PDF. But if you don't, have, don't know what platform it's in, uh, you can actually just drag it into the convert to PDF and it will do it for you. And it will actually OCR it for you, I think, it, in, in some cases as well. So that is my, uh, let me pause share. I want to stop share. Where did it go? Why is it not letting me uh, stop sharing? There it goes. Man, things got issues today. So that's my like large overview. There's a ton of things that we can do um, within Express that Margaret's going to highlight. But if you have any specific questions about the role of Express, its value in education, how it gets deployed, um, or things like uh, what are these quick functions and what else should we need to know, I'm happy to answer those. But I want to let Margaret take the stage, if you will, our my co-game show host, and, and let us play the game today to see what kind of fun we can get into. All right. Thank you so much. Justin, that was so cool. I I... I love the background changer and I'm going to use that shamelessly, shamelessly. I love that tool. It's like, it takes, it doesn't take any long at all to do it in Photoshop, but you have to know how, how low layers work in Photoshop, right? So it's just amazing. Trust me, everybody. Now I have pasted again into the chat, a website because I can't think unless it's on the web. So what I'm going to do here is now really I can't is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Ta-da! And if you click on this one link right here, it gets you to the second half of today's presentation. And I was really looking at web pages. I love web pages. I make a lot of them. I can't stop myself. Why would I? And this is a very addictive tool. So what I've got here are some things that kind of walk you through what I was doing and that might help you as well. So here's part one, getting started. Notice that when I click on that, it opens up to this. Now, um, Justin talked earlier about a URL. URL means uniform resource locator or web address. Okay, so this is a special web address for this that I made and it's part one getting started. And Justin, you're awesome because this right in here, this page just talks about how you would log into Adobe Express, thank God, but also, this page has welcome to the Creative Crowd Express user guide, web page, and then tutorials. So what I'm gonna do right now though, is I'm gonna log into Adobe Express and I already have earlier, so it's letting me in. And here's what mine looks like. So let's just take a moment to look at this environment because that, that is what I had to do. And if you notice, my images all look different than Justin's and I, that's because of what we've been looking at and what we've been doing. So it's kind of like a changing mobile environment for you. So for me, one thing that I really needed when I started using this is I need a place that I can go back to. So right here, see this little Adobe Creative Cloud Express button. If I click that, it sends me home. I'm always home. And that is in this next document right here. Well, it's actually right here, Home in Adobe Express. And so if I'm working on any project, and when I say project, that means what Justin was showing you, images, web page, video, any one of those, and I feel overwhelmed, I click here and I'm home and I feel better. And then everything that I was working on, let me make this a little bit smaller. Hold on one second so you can see it. Everything that I was working on, see where it says recent, is down there. 
And so if I want to look at something again and go back to it, I can, but I just need that clearing of, of the brain to, that helps me a lot just to get started. Now, part two, web page and text editing. So I want to take a little time out because one thing I realized is you're sitting there going, why on earth? Well, maybe you're not, but here's what I would think. Why would I use this? Why would I use Adobe Express? Well, for one thing, if we want our little darling students to write and to create and express themselves, sometimes it is good to give them a new tool to do that with. And also we're kind of tasked right now with digital literacy, teaching our students how to cope with the new technology. And party wants to go, wow, thanks. Could you help me cope with the new technology while we're at it? Uh, yeah, that's what summers are for, Margaret. Good job. So what I have here is digital literacy made really easy with Adobe CC Express. Because what I want to tell you is, if you can type it, you can put it in here. You can make this web page. You can make a web page, which means you can have your students make one. So you could have your students make a journal or do a project or introduce themselves using a web page and making text. So again, I went a little bit more deeper into the instructions. So you can look at these web, these little web pages that I've made as examples and also instructional. And I love this, Justin wrote to me and he said, with enthusiasm about the Adobe CC Express web page, it's a web address for a living animated document, autoresponsive, easy to update and change. And I just love that. So I'm quoting you, Justin, it was awesome. And then I wrote, I just think it's pretty, which is why I like it. But you know, I also agree with Justin on that too. So think about it this way. If you've got projects you want your students to do, and you kind of always want to be able to see them or get them excited about new tech or, or just thinking in a different way. If they can do it in Word or PowerPoint or anything that they can type or write out, they can do it in here. Now, because I love a good instructional video, I have some instructional and videos right here embedded into these pages that you can always look at, like how to create a web page, how to add text, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And then I have my lion notes. Do what's best for you. For example, all of the words on these pages, I wrote out in Word first because I knew what I wanted to say, but I was so into using this web page that it got in the way of the words. So I just copied and pasted everything into it, which is lovely. Now let's go back to this creative place. And if you want to do this with me, that would be fantastic. So if you all want to log into express.adobe.com, I say go for it. And if you don't, don't worry. You can always go back to the website link I gave you and try it again. So again, we click the good old plus sign and we've got here web page. So click on that. Uh, and this appears. Now, here's one thing that we can look at. Let's, I'm going to click on themes for a minute because I, they're just pretty. And it kind of tells you a little bit about what the text is going to look like when it's displayed. And of course, there's Trek and I love Star Trek. So that's really great. And Storybook is just adorable. I'm going to go back to Chris because it seems to be the most, I don't it's know. The it's the Helvetica of themes. Ah, uh, <laughs> thank you. My God, that's totally perfect. Thank you, Justin, the Helvetica of themes. And for today, I can click where it says, add a title. This is just a practice. Seriously, you can do that. And then subtitle, I'm going to put in my name. And if you want your students to do this, they can do the same thing. So just kind of click on this gray area. And when you click on it, you'll notice something right here. Photo. Can you add a photo for a background graphic? Why, yes, you can. Excuse me, all dear participants, while I move you over so we can go look, I'll move this in, so we can go look at pretty photos. And what do I want for my background? I, I want computer. I want a computer in the background because that's what I do. I love computers. Although right now what I really want is coffee. But there you are. Here's a nice one. If I see one that I like, I'm going to click on it. And it's in the background. And there we are. 
and you did Real quick, not. I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt for a second, Margaret. No, no, go ahead. Yeah. Um, two things. One, you could search coffee and computer. Probably get them both. But okay, second I off, tried that once. It wasn't good. No, but go ahead. Go ahead. Try second it. Second yeah. off, um, it's important to know that as an IU on an IU account, you have access to Adobe Stock, which is professional grade image assets, and any student on an IU account will also have access to Adobe Stock on all these images. If you're on a non-IU account, you um, you won't have access to stock without license in it, but you can actually search. They have a like, search free photos option. So you can search for Pixabay, uh, Google, all those kind of things. And it will auto cite them for you. It auto credit them. So the students who are you know, going to Pixabay to find an image of um, coffee and computer, um, it, at the bottom, it'll give credit. So they don't have to worry about, like, did I forget to cite it and all those kind of things. So, so with this image right here, Justin, I've just kind of inserted it. Yep doesn't seem anything's really going on. So I'm not really too worried about it because I, it's not, I don't, I don't know if it's part of our IU stock or not. It is, this is an IU, oh. well, it's a stock image, but it's already been licensed by somebody else. So it's, it automatically comes in without the weird watermarks. So yeah. Very cool. And that probably happened because I logged in using my IU account. It's magic. All right, so now we scroll down and this is fun. You know how sometimes when you're in PowerPoint and you're like, what do I do now? And this, and the PowerPoint screen says, click to type title and you go, thank you. Well, right here, I scroll down a bit and I have choices, photo, text, but I'm gonna go text. And I click on that and I can start typing. And I'll just type my introduction to my practice. Now, I gotta show you something fun. If I click back on these words, I kind of want them to be a bit bigger. See H1 and H2, that means header. H1 is big, H2 is not as big. So there you are, I kind of like that. And now I'm gonna to go to the end of that and hit enter. Every time you hit enter, you get a little plus sign. Relax everybody, it annoyed me to no end when I got that, because I'm like, the spaces are too big. Yeah, but then when you, no, it was, I was like, you're too big. But then when it, when you publish it, it works. I'm going to show you, trust me on this one. I am just here to type words and say hi. All right, there's that one. Now, I've talked to you about how this is big and it's just started. Let's talk about this as a web page right now. This is sitting in your little spar spot of a server. A server is a computer that holds information for the web. And it's not available to people right now. You have not shared it. You have not published it. Publish is the big web term. So here's what I want you to always do when you're doing stuff for your students. You click share. Publish link and share. Now, I like to pick a category, I always do education. And I click this little right here, little thing, because I want my name to appear on it. And remember, I think when Justin was talking about putting the licensing and who did what, here's photo credit. So this image that I entered has already got the photo credits on it. Thank you very much, Life. And I click create link. And then you get that adorable little quote. I seem to get that every time. And you've got this right here, shareable link, click to copy. I will be honest with you, that is one funky looking link. Yeah. Wow, that's that's neat. So I'm probably going to go to, I'll go to a Word document I have over here and I am going to copy and paste that into my Word document so that I do not lose it. And you can also, I, um, in, yeah, just as a real quick thing, depending on what your workflows look like, you can embed it in Teams, you can quickly get an embed code so it will appear inside of it. Like if you're in Canvas, for example, you can actually get the embed code and embed it inside of a Canvas page. So it's a so there's lots of functionality within it. But Where, yeah, oh, the, there it is. Embed, yeah. Ah. So the uh, ah, but the shareable link is definitely a nondescript, and you're not going to accidentally find that link. So yeah, it's, really not. It's, but it's yours forever. Okay, so. I've got it. I'm going to copy this again, and then I'm just going to go to their tab and paste it. And look, all those spaces are gone, and I kind of really like it. It's a very clean, it's just a very clean look. So I'm going to go back in here, and now I'm going to look at what I wanted you all to look at. We've got web page and text editing. 
And again, like let's say that you wanted your students to introduce themselves, like maybe in discussion or even through email, you could have them build a little web, well, a little web page like this. What would also be fun to do is if you want your students to reflect on their learning, you could have like this build this web page and put a link in Canvas. And so week one, what did I learn? Week two, week three, week four, and then see how they progress in their knowledge and have them reflect upon that. I'm now going to go to images. Oh, and by the way, these backgrounds, I had a lot of fun choosing them, in case you're wondering. So everything that I just showed you is what I did to make this page. So here's an introduce themselves as well. And it's like, let's make an infographic about yourself. So if I wanted my students to make a graphic about themselves, it's really easy in Adobe Express. And, oh, and here's the image that I made about me. So I'm gonna go back to Adobe Express. Now, I have that moment of, oh God, where am I? But I do not worry, I just click. My little home icon and I'm back where I wanted to be. Now, in the instructions in here, I'll show you. I, oh, well, I lost it. I want to do an infographic, infographic about me. Now, the reason I chose that was there are so many things to choose from. I kind of want to narrow the search. So you could do that as well if you wanted to do. And there you see the one that I used. And you could go to any of these infographics and just choose it. And you could, oh God, there's computers and, and about me. So, so let's just say I'm gonna choose this one right here. Or you could even choose one about yourself. Yes, you could, you can do this. It's not scary. I also would like to add, when you learn about technology, your swear and prayer skills increase. <laughs> so swearing and both praying, these things happen, I encourage both. So I'm gonna click start from. Do I wanna complete it? Sure. And you know what people, there's still stress. There, there's, this is not high stakes. If you don't like it, you can just close Adobe Express and go do something else and come back to it later. So always remember that you can do that. I'm gonna click create from this template and it's gonna open up. And there it is. Now, one thing that I, I, I wanna to try to share with you, and I think about like a PowerPoint, but like when you click on different areas, ah, do you see how this area all about me has a line around it? That means that you can edit it. And right now I've clicked on those words. If I want to edit those words, I have to go over here. Uh, I don't want to, I really like them. Now it says name, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna double click on replace. Please tell me that I can type in there. You booger, replace. How do I type on that? It's not letting me type. How do I type on that, Justin? Well, so this is a template. Oh, text. Be, yeah, it's a template meant to be printable. So well, it's supposed no to be printed fun. to fill in. You chose one that is actually not meant to be edited. <laughs> <laughs> this Which, is great. But no, this, this happens. Great. Okay, that, yeah. And this is, you know why this is great? Because when you teach people how to use technology, it never you works. are humiliated <laughs> on a daily basis. And it is awesome. So what yeah. do we do? Yep. We swear in our heads and go back to home. Ha ha. No, I'm not saving this stupid project. I don't need it anymore. All right. See, that's simple. Let's go back and do this one for it's one photographic about me. I'll just go use the one I've already used because I know I can edit it. So see if it happens to you, no big deal. Yep. Just click on this, create from a template. That, that, that's the key is different ones are designed by different designers, right? So they have different targetable outcomes and interactive features. Every element should be editable, but you have to then, if you wanted to add text, you'd have to click add text and put a text box in its place, right? Or yeah, over top of it, right? Yeah, I'm not that, I don't do that complicated, man. So I'm just gonna click here, my name is, and this is funky, look at this, look at this. This is, I thought this was really funky. So in the edit text box, my name is, and then there's a lot of space. So I'm just typed in is Margaret Lyon, and I am 58 years old, I really am, and I'm not ashamed of it. So I type in 5A, and then I typed in, I put a period there, and then I went, whoa. Wow, that's some serious line spacing here. How do I fix that? When in doubt, start to click. And what I found was this, the spacing, oh, spacing. And I drag this in and the line spacing is not as big. 
those are tiny little words. So I click the drop down arrow and I have a 24 and that's better. And again, just like in PowerPoint, I can click and drag this little box around. I think I'm gonna go to- You'll be able to type in there too. I'm gonna type 2O. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So that's all about me. What I like, well, I, what I like, I like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We live in such a great world, people. I was watching Black Widow before all these talks and it made me happy. Now, one more time, here's that crazy line spacing. Why? I don't know, I'm gonna make that smaller. But you know what? I think I'm gonna make the, eh, I'm gonna make the word space, I'm gonna make the words a bit bigger. But you know what I really wanna do right now is I need to change the color. I'm gonna go purple, nice. So I can sit and play on all of these things and, and have a great little image. And if I don't want name and class, I just click on it and hit the delete key, sometimes several times, and eventually it goes away. <laughs> and now I like it. So I can do one of two things. I can share it. I can click share. Just a moment, we're saving your project. Isn't that sweet they say that? I can publish it. And, and then there's a link to the image. Oh, thanks, bud. That's great. Thank you so much. Yay. Well, now what I want to do is just download it. So click download. Ping JPEG PDF. Hold, um, hold on one second, please. Sweetie, I can hear that. Uh, sorry. So what I'm doing right now is uh, ping PDF. The ping and the JPEG really work as images for a website and the PDF. All of this is pretty easy to have on the web. So download, choose a back. I'm going to choose solid color. This is actually a really important point uh, about this process. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with how JPEGs and PNGs work, um, if you save an image as a JPEG and it doesn't have a background, like the one I did earlier when I took myself out, uh, it'll automatically fill in the background with white, right? But if you want it to be a, without a background, a floating image without this background so that Margaret could put this about me on top of a red web page or something, Right, then you need to save it as a PNG and choose without background so that, it allows, do you, it. Yeah, so that it allows you to manipulate things differently. Um, it, JPEG, it treats all empty, empty information as a white value, whereas PNGs keep them as point values. <laughs> it's, it's weird stuff, I know. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So now I have a couple of images of that, and there we are. So, introduction to my practice site. I'm back here. And I want to add these images to my website. How do I do that? I go home. Oh, I love you home. And then I can look at my recent stuff. I'm going to click view all. And see how we have these lovely little uh, thumbnails about what our projects are. So you don't have to worry about what you're doing. Okay, that does look like the website. That does look like that thing that did not work. Shame on you. And then my project, very nice. So I'm going to click, this is just a place to open it up and edit. And ah, as I scroll down, you get this lovely little menu right here. I'm going to click photo. And I'm going to upload my photo. I click upload photo. And now I have to wonder what, oh, there it is. I'm going to upload the transparent one just for the fun of it. Open. And now it appears. Now, because this background is white, it still looks white. But if it were a different, the background were a different yeah, color. Yeah, if you change your theme, you can change your background color too. <laughs> dark one. Actually, Nightcap will do it. Yeah. There you go. So now you see. Oh, that's hot. I kind of like that. That's kind of that. <laughs> so, see, isn't it? See, and then you just get carried away with this. Let's do track. No, oh, track is white too. I don't care. I really like that. Vintage. All right, before, oh, before I get lost in themes, um, which one should I choose, sir? By the way, Vintage also added, if you notice, it added a color gradient vignette uh, on your image. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna go to crisp. This is, okay, I, and I say this sincerely, this tool is so easy to use that you really don't need a full instruction. The best thing I can tell everybody is to spend time playing with it the way Margaret is doing right now. It is in incredibly helpful even if you know nothing about design it's built on established design principles every th every template every theme 
is fit into a design structure that has already been tried and true and proven to be reliable in terms of like separation of dyads and triads and all those kind of color schemes. So it, it is it is effective. It's just it's really a lot of fun to play with um, as, as, a, as a function of oh, actually in my in case, I do it as a function in class, like go make an image. You get five minutes to tell me something you know about class and then they go and create stuff and send it back to me and we use it as a talking point. It can be, my teacher makes me write stuff in five minutes. <laughs> now, one thing I wanna share with you though, I just added this image, which means I have to update the site. So I'm going to click share again, publish and share, and it's gonna go, ah, should we update? Yes, update link. Now, the address isn't going to change. All those big crazy numbers are not gonna change. But now, when we go to the site and refresh it, always refresh people, makes your life easier. There's your image. So if I go back here to it, part three was images. So it talked about that for you all. And, and this is an image, the same image that I made, but I changed the colors on it. Now we've got embed video. Oh my gosh, this was so much fun. This is so crazy easy. So I love this video right here, Hans Zimmer on YouTube. And I am going to click on it right now because you can watch it all in big life color, but it's really easy to insert a video. And I'm gonna show you how I do it. And I want this same one. So I'm just gonna go back to YouTube. Oh, YouTube, and I'm gonna go man of steel, wonder woman theme live. So awesome. And there it is, cause I really love it. And I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna, st seriously people, you need to watch this sometime. I haven't shared my sound with you, but it's really freaking good. So all I do right now is just click in the top at the address. Now this up here, you probably know, and if you don't, well, here it goes. This is the address bar up here. So it has the address of where <clears throat> this video lives. That address will never change. And so I'm going to copy it. I click on it to make sure that everything is selected. See how it's highlighted? Quick note, if something is selected on a computer, that means the computer is focusing all of its attention on it. So now I'm going to copy it. You could right click on this and do copy. You could do a keyboard shortcut, control C for copy. I don't really care what you do to copy, you do you people. Now let's go back to my place where I'm editing. Ah, here it is, video. Now click on that link and look at this, isn't that lovely? It says add an embedded video. So now I'm going to paste the link in. Now notice where it says YouTube, Vimeo, Creative Cloud, Express Spark. You may not be able to do this with all video, but you can do it with a YouTube one. So I paste and I save. Here's my video. That is so easy. Makes me want to cry with joy. And then I click share, publish and save link. Update that link. It just makes me so happy. Yes, lots of things make me happy. That's one of them. And then finally, okay, so this next part I'm going to show you is the Glide Show. And I had never heard of Glide Show. So Justin and I are getting together. He's like, Glide Show, Glide Show, you got to show it. I'm like, okay, I have no idea what that is, but I'm going to show it. And then I went and I found out about Glide Show and I totally understand the hype because, oh my gosh, that was crazy easy. So here we are, the Glide Show. And we scroll down and I'll look, pictures. And I did pictures of people using computers. And I tried to make sure that I used a wide range of colors and genders and ages because I really don't want to look at white people all day long. I'm white, but that's just me. So there we are. I, mean, I, I need variety of people using computers and people in my life. So that's a glide show. I don't know how to make one of these. It's so amazingly simple. You click the plus sign. Glide show. Now. Once again, you choose pictures. This time I'm going to choose coffee because coffee is one of the great loves of my life. Ah, oh, look, espresso. And what do I do? What do I do? I click. Well, that was really easy. And then I can click again and I can click again and I can click again and I could probably do this forever, but I'm gonna stop now. Oh no, one more, one more. 
and I think, okay, and then I click save. And now I just scroll through my delicious slideshow. That was it. And as um, uh, Justin was saying to me when we were talking about this earlier, and he might want to add now, that's just a very simple PowerPoint. PowerPoint, it's very simple. It's easy for them to do. So you can say to your students, show me what you show me what you want to do in this and i probably could just let me do another one Maybe. actually you know what actually Mary, real quick go to the scroll up to glide show that first image either one doesn't matter and you see the little gray box and the plus button on your left yeah no no uh no the right on your bottom left your screen oh sorry click, yes like that and it becomes you can now add a photo inside of there you can add text inside of there you can add a, embed a video so you can create content on top of an image rather than an image in line with uh, content. And so if students are making a, a presentation, for example, um, you know, if they have their bullet points on a, on a PowerPoint, they can do the exact same logic here, put their, their content in here. And then when it comes time in class to present, they can actually press the present button and it will present like a presentational tool. And so it's oh, like, oh my yeah. God. Okay. Let me publish this. You, yeah. So, and you can present, know, you can actually use present without publishing it, which is the other fun part. If students don't want to, oh, okay. I know I'm just it's a it's a thing that you know that it it's meant as a web facing thing you can share and leave with people, but it also gives you the option to turn it into a presentational tool. Um, yeah, so if you actually just click the present button, you'll see the the difference It'll, at, at the very top next to share. Oh. Yeah. And it will turn it into essentially a presentational aid. And so if you have content on top of your slides as you slide up and down, it'll it'll move the oh, slides. Slide. Right. Oh my God. So if that had the text box on it with a video or a text box with your photo or espresso machine, right? And you can actually move those boxes from left to center to right. So it's not a full on dynamic representation, but it does give you different categories of areas to, to map content onto. Now, how do I get out of the presentation? You just hit uh, escape, I think. Yep. <laughs> so I, I've done a number of talks and keynote events where I, instead of doing PowerPoint anymore, I actually put them in Spark page because then when I'm done, it's the same link. I just give it to people. So they have access to everything. There's no sending the slide deck separately. I put the link on the top, you know, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that, so- what Changed your I life, mean? didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you did. I'm like, I want to make more. I'm going to do more. Uh, uh, yes. So once again, we have all these little things that kind of gives you ideas and resources on how to make and create and do these things. So what I want to do is like, I kind of want to stop the share now and see, uh, yeah, hi, interesting creative capacities, which can add, oh, okay. Tell me, what do you all need? What yeah. do you all want? When, what do you teach? That's what I'd kind of like to know. What do you teach? This is the interactive portion of today's show. So feel free to, to, to let us know um, questions, concerns, comments, uh, issues that you for C areas you might want to, to test out with. Uh, there's a there's a ton of incredible resources on how to use Express. Well, and Spark before that, for those who don't know. Um, oh, Jill. Oh my God. Okay, you teach Spanish. And, and ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at languages. All right. So this is my first thought. You could have them make uh, an Adobe uh, Express web page or graphics about, you know, can make like a web page about their favorite words or their favorite phrases, or you could have them make like different graphics about like, you know, what shoe is in Spanish and what it is in English or something like that. Basically, the, the way I have to think of it is anything you would have them do on paper or on canvas, they can do in Adobe Express. Only it's pretty and fun. I think that's kind of what I like about it too. Justin, well, would you, how do you, yeah, that no, I, listen, I've seen some really cool stuff in, in language and second language learners uh, process because you can have them not only with something like a, a web page structure, you can not only include written content in the second language, but you can actually have them make a, a voiceover Adobe uh, Express video where they have like five images and they have to explain a, a personal story through, you know, sort of, you know, a donde esta la biblioteca. I don't know. They're asking where the library is, something like that. They, they, they pronounce, go through pronunciation. Then they can embed that video and add further text about what they're doing, their content, their audio. So there's a lot of ways in which the tools can quickly integrate, especially if you're in a space that isn't on a paid account. So this is one of the things that Express is a really, not only is it user friendly for social media folks, but it's incredibly usable for like K through 12 because it doesn't require a paid account, 
right? Um, and that becomes, it's much, in that regard, it's a lot like Google Slides or a Google Suite. It, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, for those of you, I know that we have the high school social studies, the, the private online, and it's really, and again, it works in the online space because it's it, when you're done, you export all the stuff as a URL. But so there's lots of really, I think, unique options within um, what you can do across the full function of the Express Creative Cloud Suite or Creative Cloud Express Suite. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that right eventually. To me, it's still Adobe Spark. Okay, it's been Adobe Spark forever, and it's gonna take years for me to undo that baggage. Of course, before that, it was called Adobe Slate, so that's another problem. I don't even get into that, but. That um, Adobe thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I would say that also for, for more language things. I mean, again, whatever you tools you use in the mm -hmm. to teach the language, you might uh, you could probably translate it to online. So like I might, from for my class, it's more like you touch your hands on that software, but it might be like, what do a learning journal? What have you learned? What has changed? What's different? How do you go online? Introduce yourself and make a quick web, a web express page. I like that, uh, Rebecca. You, you, you're like I'm gonna let Xiao, Xiao Ching uh, uh, take yeah, the lead yes. here. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hi. <laughs> No, it's, that's fine. Um, both Rebecca and I, um, we're um, from Center for Language Technology. So we do um, provide tech support and also pedagogical support spaces for language instructors. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but we we are, um, we have used Adobe Spark for a long time. So, mm -hmm. and, and then Rebecca and I found on the same day that, oh, it's no longer called Adobe Spark. Yeah. But, and as a center, we use Adobe Spark a lot. Um, to create flyers for pro promoting events in languages. Um, what we, uh, it's really easy to use and what we um, find um, helpful is the um, collaboration feature. Mm -hmm. Like in, like you want, it's hard for you to collaborate through um, say Photoshop, but like because we we added world language uh, festival flyers together so so one person created a project and then we just add um other staff then they would find that project in their shared project and then we can just add it so so that's something we really enjoy and another possibility was using this for for instruction for students, I believe is a language portfolio. Currently, uh, we work with uh, Italian program and we use uh, Google, Google site to, to do language portfolio, but I can see how easy that can be adapted here by uh, creating a, yeah, the, a web page here, yeah. Yeah, the, sure. The thing about Adobe, right? And I say this sincerely, uh, again, because I work at IU and I don't work for Adobe, but I do love Adobe because of the fact that their entire goal is to create workflows that function, right? Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to create, again, a video and an image and then put it on a website, uh, you can do it all in one stop. There's not, you know, and it quickly shares yeah. across those forms. It does have the collaboration tool. It's not Google, Google collaboration. You can't edit the exact same time, but it does create a, a unique opportunity for, for that kind of cross campus or cross, in this case, departmental engagement or, or staff engagement or student engagement. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the ability to quickly create an image, add a text, add a sound file or embedded link or whatever the case may be, and how seam seamless it works is to me what, what separates it at this point. And actually, it's, if you move out of Express, you learn those functions in Express and you go to the larger Creative Cloud suite, the exact same thing happens, right, um, at, at an industry level. So I edit a Photoshop file and it automatically updates it in my video. I don't have to go back and change it later, right? So those kind of things are, are, are key to the, to the bigger tool, but it's, um, I don't know, I think it's great for learning technology and language techn language learning because it's, mm -hmm. I've done a number of stuff again, legitimately about watching people tell these incredibly rich, like uh, like overseas study experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Especially like the travel, the travel experiences and where they're narrating in uh, the language they're learning. And it's just beautifully done. Like it's incredible. Mm -hmm. So what they can do with it. And my first thought was thinking, wow, I, because I'm obsessed with coffee, is like I have like maybe for languages have someone write in there in, a, in the language of learning like how coffee is made. Like I love coffee, so I'm going to write about coffee. So they would write about coffee in their language, and they get pictures and videos or, or something along that line. Okay. But you're probably always doing already doing all these amazing things, and I think it's so awesome that you're using it for flyers, because mm -hmm. like I want to get in there and make a flyer. I don't have anything to make a flyer for, but I just love how it looks so much that I want to do that. And related to languages, I, I forgot for details, but I think at the very beginning when we were introducing Adobe Stock uh, to language instructors, I think 
you can also search for images in in ah. um, a different languages because Adobe yeah. has a, a group of artists or people who work for them, like from different, like various countries too. Yeah, so they actually yes. have, uh, their their stock is actually an open model. So anybody can contribute stock content. It has to be vetted and approved after they establish an account. But so we have a number of students that I'm trying to get to create IU-based content for Adobe stock, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, so you absolutely, you, you can find things in the stock set of things for those on an IU account that are absolutely gonna be uh, location specific um, or cultural specific, that adds a nice rich dimension to it. And I was, I was thinking, uh, Jill says recipes. I was thinking, I, I keep having this nailed it scenes in my head, right? So maybe you got pre and post, here's your recipe and here's what I made, <laughs> like the visuals, but I, you know, as you talk about uh, the narrative representation or the image representations, uh, the idea of, uh, this is one of the things I love about Adobe Stock is that it's incredibly diverse and incredibly targeted and it, talk, it, it allows me to talk about things like licensing versus creative commons versus access, you know, those kind of stuff. So, um, but it doesn't apply in all cases because we have folks who, you know, are both at and non at IU. Uh, so that, that is a, a distinction we have to be aware of. You know, another thing I was thinking, if you wanted to just get started for yourself, just make stuff for yourself. You don't yeah. have to share it with anybody. Just make it for yourself. Go have fun like I did. This is just, I'm typing. Because you have to do, I, I feel like you have to create in a low to no stakes time. And if you're doing it for a class, then just create and let it go wherever it goes. I love your thing about recipes because I'm thinking, Jill, you're talking about recipes like how to make gluten-free brownies and put that in Adobe Spark. And that would be, I mean, Adobe, now you got me doing it. Adobe it's Express. Spark. I guess I'm, <laughs> Oh it's going to be spark forever let's uh, not, let's adobe, not adobe spark express and uh yeah, that could be another way to use it like why not make a cookbook go for like around the world or something i now you got me going on i'll get quiet I just love it. any other questions or thoughts or things that people teach although i think it's so awesome that we have people who are using this already in their languages teaching this is so cool i know um uh... I know Christine said she teaches on uh, online, the online high school. Uh, and so uh, do, I use this all the time in my online classes. Yeah. So I use this express suite. I'll, I mean, as a functional part, instead of having students do a traditional essay, mm -hmm. they always have to turn in a spark page. Um, Cause I want them to think strategically about the relationship between image and text uh, or video and text rather than just the singular modality. Mm -hmm. um, but I, we, we, you know, I use it again. I have the thing I call think, pair, make, share. So it's an active learning strategy that, you know, Margaret has suffered through. So okay, um, right. I love it. where you, you take, uh, have students, you know, introduce them to express uh, image builder and say, you know, identify two takeaways from today's text. Um, and then they, then you pair them up. They talk about what their takeaways are. And then in their little partnerships, they say, you need to pick each of you need to pick one of these takeaways. Now go create an express image that represents it. And then they get five minutes to do it. They share them back with me as images or links, and then we use those to navigate course discussion. And so, um, you know, it, it becomes this this layering of engagement. So, yeah, they don't have um, you can't access Adobe the Creative Cloud suite in full, but they can still use Adobe Express because it's uh, anybody with an email account can access Adobe Express, not the premium content, and not obviously Adobe Stock, but you can still search the free you know free functional images online. Um, and so, like, it just there's lots of ways to integrate active, engaged learning through digital creativity, uh, both in person and, in, and online. And I found the that weird little think pair make sure thing works great with my online class because it it gets them doing things rather than just looking at me, right? Um, or uh, you know, listening to me, which is the worst. So, <laughs> like, I would like to see you share something. Is what I'm always. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chantel, I saw this and I agree with you. And it's pairing what Justin just said. If if you could get in there and use, oh my God pre-service science and now oh, that'd be so much fun because there's so many videos they could find hero dr fauci and things like that that they could like add into this right oh that'd be so great that probably made no sense what i just yeah. said it got so exciting for me i, I well, think you know, i think you could do it yeah well, just i'm sorry yeah no let me let me share something real quick so one of the things i think you know we didn't touch on but it's part of this suite that um this happens a lot where students will make a google slideshow right? Because that's what they're, the tools of Google Slides something they have. And then they may try and record a narrative over the top, right? Can you narrate your Google Slides to present something to the class? Um, and it's, a, you know, don't get me wrong, it works perfectly fine in all kinds of ways. Uh, but if you can start to add and get to think more dynamically about the kind of story they're telling, you know, it, it does help 
the engagement, right? So it's not just, can you make six Google slides and tell me what they are, but can you design a, an unfolding story over time? So this is the shift for me from like video to, or stock to video. Um, but if we go to, let me share my screen again, desktop Okay, one. so I could try to yeah. Making sure I got the right screen here. What is my email up? How did I get open? Okay. Um, create, uh, click the plus button, go to video, right? And then it's, it's, it actually has a timer. It's trying to keep you short. So uh, hello again. And so then, you know, you can tell a journey. You can show and tell. Um, there's all these options to choose as templates. So you can just start from scratch. But if you, you personal growth, this hero's journey, it's fine. Uh, show and tell, look at that. And it's going to then auto build this template again. And if students already have the slides, they can export them as images and just dump them in here. It's got a better audio recording structure. Um, and it's really uh, quite straightforward. So this is my first slide, right? Um, introduce yourself, make it personal. So I can just, it's going to ask you my, let's see if I can do it at the same time. Oh, I'm, I'm in use right now. But yeah. in theory, you click the plus, this little microphone button, and it'll go three, two, one. And then you just record. And if you get to like the 30 second mark, it'll say you're going too long <laughs> because these are meant to be short, quick videos um, as a mode of engagement. And it's another way of thinking about how do we get students to interact with course content, create new avenues for learning and, and, and approach. Uh, and the same with everything else in the Adobe Suite. You can add images here. You can create functional little different layouts or themes. You can add music, which is a fun one. It's not a high end video editor, but it's really good for a quick sort of personal storytelling kind of practice. And then when you're done, you can share it or download it. So it can either be a living URL, just like the image, or it can be a downloaded file. Um, and that's another, again, it's just, it's not meant to replace anything you're already doing. It's meant to be an additive element to what you might consider inviting students to think through. Um, especially, again, the language thing is really one, because especially if you want to hear how they say things, as yeah. opposed to just how well they write them. Because I know that my reading skills in Spanish are way better than my speaking skills in Spanish. Um, and the same is for French, right? So also it's kind of fun is that it's like there's so much you can do in there it's just yeah. it's a miracle it makes me happy i think you can also search adobe stock images Xiaoxing, by images so if you have an image you can pull the image in and it will find other images like that image right. as you're searching i realized that it seems that um there is a very active japanese group compared to chinese group in, in that, because when I use um, the same characters, the Chinese characters, saying xian um, but also means uh, instructors, uh, teachers in, in, in Japanese. And when I use that characters to search, it will all come out uh, Japanese pictures. Yeah. <laughs> really interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how the demographics break down, but um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's incredibly robust international culture. And there's actually a growing Korean culture. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Yonsei University in, in South Korea, uh, uh, in Seoul has become, uh, they're one of the like 50 creative campuses. And so they've had a, a really robust commitment to digital creativity on their campus. And so we've seen an increase in production across the larger suite of elements on Adobe, including stock. Um, real quick before I forget, for those who don't know, there's actually, there's also a thing called the Adobe Education Exchange, uh, which is for educators from, you know, again, K through 20. Um, where people like me create assets and media and instructional guides and, and we post them on education exchange. It's free to join. All you need is an email address, right? Um, and then you can search based on topic and tool or topic and strategy. Um, two years ago, I was part of this thing called the Adobe Master Teacher Series. Uh, and uh, it's like 25 to 30 of us from across the, the state, the globe, um, work with Adobe and the company Better Lesson to create really um, strategically designed instructional guides for, for faculty and instructors to say, here's your target audience. Here's what, it, here's the overview for the faculty. Here's the breakdown of time that's required. And then here's a guide for faculty facing and here's a guide that's student facing. So you can actually just give the students the actual handout and not have to spend time in class teaching it. The handout breaks down all the steps themselves. Uh, and there's a ton of those things that are available now through Education Exchange. Uh, that site's become, well, incredibly better in the last three to four years as they've committed to their education division in ways that they hadn't done before. I mean, that, it's always been there. There's been a community there for a long time, but now it's really actually usable and functional um, and systematized in sort of fun ways. So if you're looking for other ideas beyond the weird things Margaret and I are going to share today, um, that's, a, that's a great place to start just to give yourself, you know, and it's not, and it's not people who work for Adobe. It's not like 
you know, here's why these tools matter. It's legitimately like, here's how I do vlogging and I just happen to use Adobe Rush or here's how I do, you know, um, infographic design for science classes. And here's what it looks like. So um, including things like using things like InDesign to make um, interactive magazines or journals, right? So it's, it, it goes from the high-end tool uh, from like XD all the way down to Adobe Express. All right, we got 12 minutes. What else we got? Yeah, come on. Are there any needs that you have in particular this you know just in teaching in general that maybe this would help or or like a specific thing like so i want to use this for this i want to use uh the graphics for something in my classroom any questions go ahead but if not margaret and i will fill the time like don't worry like even if you're not here we're going to just fill the time because that's what we do right I was gonna say, you can also ask Justin how he made that fantastic background, which is so gorgeous. Mine, yeah. uh, I got it from Seawit last year. Yeah. I, I, used that, I used that one last year during when I when I presented last year. I did, forgot we had those. Um, okay. No, I like yours, this is good. It's, you know, one of the first things I have my students do is just as a, like early on when, when I'm teaching Photoshop specifically uh, as the pandemic sort of set in, uh, was we, we worked on how to build Zoom backgrounds, right? So something simple and fun. It's a way of learning the tool. It's useful for them. Um, and so this is, you know, one of those, because it's not as simple as like you just create an image because Zoom actually resizes and reshapes it, not, not to a standard breakdown. Um, it's such a really bizarre uh, sort, of, sort of thing. But nonetheless, it's, a, it's an ongoing battle for me. But I, I, I situate, you know, a lot of these things early on. So for me, I think one of the biggest parts that we deal with is Students have spent a lot of time being taught how to write text, whether you going through grade school, junior high, high school, and so on, you get a lot of time exposed to writing text and responding to text. And we sort of almost unintentionally educate out of them their, their visual literacy skills and their dynamic interactive sort of engagement sort of elements with, with representation. And so by the time they get to me, I have to like put these things back in. I'm like, how do you think with images? How do you think with uh, user experience design and those kind of stuff? that when they're like two and three and four years or fourth grade, I see a lot of that stuff happen early. Um, like my, my own kids in their class, I see them doing this stuff now in a way that, you know, the students in, in undergrad right now don't do, which is fascinating. So I, I think that the more we can put tools in their hands that let them situate their literacies across media and not just the only textual based responses, the better prepared they're gonna to be to tell their stories, whether it's public facing in digital spaces, whether it's in my classroom, it's in Mars classroom or, or our Christine's online classroom, right? So it's, it's how, do we, how do we create a, a depth of expressibility? Um, and, and this is just another set of tools that let us do that. I like, like Google Slides, like uh, the, the Microsoft Suite, like um, you know, Canva, if you're a Canva fan, uh, you know, those are, they're, they're uh, competitive elements. I, I just prefer the Adobe Express Suite because it's so simple to use and so integrated, right? Oh, don't forget to fill out Sam's uh, evaluation, right? Can I just share one thing, Justin? You talked about Zoom backgrounds and I looked it up and I found uh, 1500 templates for Zoom backgrounds, uh, which- In Spark or in Express? Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> share. Here you go, everybody. Here they are, Zoom backgrounds for you. Yeah. There are coffee ones, so I'm gonna use those. There ones. should be a coffee one for you, Margaret. I'm, there, I'm there are many coffee ones. I'm like, oh my God, which one do I use? Uh, look, look at this. I, how can I choose this template? And then I could just like make it mine. <laughs> so there you are, people. Be not afraid. You can make your own. But if you notice, actually, go like pull it back up. Oh, quick. I'm sorry. One second. No, this is uh, it's just one of those learning things we do in my class, right? Uh, so if you close the hit the text button, get rid of that text box thing. All right. So you see how the plate is off the edge. Like the plate is about, you know, what I would say, what seven pica off the edge, if you think about it in, in design terms. <laughs> Um, because it'll actually, the, the very edge will get, will actually get eaten by the rounding of the zoom screen. Mm -hmm. So, so if you put the plate too close to the wall, the, each, the edge of the plate will disappear. Uh, I right? did not realize that. Yeah. So you, the, the, you see my picture frame, right? There are the window frame. It's yeah. actually the same thickness all the way around, uh -huh. but it doesn't appear that way because of the representation. So it's like, you know, but it, it uh -huh. but the actual dimensions of my photo meet the exact dimensions of the zoom inter sure. integration. So it's like those little things that we talk about that are, you know, you, you'll create one and you'll like it and then you'll get in there and be like, that doesn't look right. So then you create another one. <laughs> you gotta go back and tweak like two buttons to make it work. 
So, so basically do, it would be better to move it over like this. Is yeah, what you're a little saying. bit. Yeah. Oh, all right. And then when you're in your presenting, then you can just like scoot to one side. So it'd be like you and your coffee. Right. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's totally, but uh, to me, again, I think the whole principle of this, the whole point of, of this tool is that the more we play with it, um, the more we learn about it. And it's meant to be like a zero to 60 and, or zero to creative uh, kind of tool. Like you pick it up and you go. Um, so, yeah. And with that, I'll stop talking unless there are other questions. Well, if there are no other questions, we don't need to keep you the full time. There's no no rule that says you have to be here till four thirty. Um, although, you know, I'm I'm happy to to entertain you. Um, if you do have questions outside of this and you want uh, more help or guidance or insights, whatever, feel free to reach out uh, to me or, or to Margaret. I'm sure she'll have any answer questions phone. too. Yeah. Uh, there's my email. Um, if you want to know more about the Digital Gardener Initiative uh, as well, or Digital Gardener Faculty Fellows Program, or our attempts. Oh, to uh, address these things, both at IU Bloomington, but more importantly, across the entirety of IU system. Um, happy to answer questions or let you know, or tell you when our next round of cohort applicants open up, which should be soon, right. I think. So. Sorry, it's been really exciting. And you too can make your own Zoom background. And then you too can learn to make your own Zoom backgrounds. Like. <laughs> I didn't get advice from Justin. So helpful. <laughs> so... Um, well, thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. I, I hope you, you have fun in your creative adventures. Uh, feel free to reach out and let us know how things are going. Yes, yeah. Bye. Be well. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for letting me know. Anytime. Help this has been great. I love it. I love watching oh. you work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, it was very helpful. And thank you for telling me about the images. So now I'm, I have my new, I, I'm going to go back and make more. I'm telling you, listen, that, uh, the the glide show functionality for presentations is oh once God. once I've seen once people get the hang of it, it they it's hard to get out of because it's it forces you to think less in terms of, of bullet points and more in terms of content representation. Right. Because it's also going to be a web page, so it doesn't sit by itself. And then it, as you know, my rule is anything you put on screen during a presentation, you should say out loud. Oh, so then it's yeah. also like it reinforces usability and accessibility and things like that. Uh, what else was beautiful? Yeah. I mean, I know I know that sounds crazy, but it's beautiful. And to yeah. be able to make, because I'm a frustrated artist, to be able to make something really beautiful, usable like that, like that is, is it's a miracle. Yeah. yeah. I want to show it to my students. So actually, you know, in my book on, I have a book on post-digital rhetoric, right? And so it's all about this sort of new aesthetics and how these things work. And one of the arguments I make is that at this point in time, every really great new artist technique and approach and style or aesthetic uh, is within, it seems like within days is algorithmized, right? So that you and I can do it too. Oh, so yeah. if I create, uh, I can, I can make Andy Warhol, right. And mm -hmm. it takes me 30 minutes. I do the whole thing, right. Like mm -hmm. the, all those images, mm -hmm. right. So, um, and it's because we've created algorithms that reproduce those particular kind of aesthetic and, 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 or representational effects. Yeah. And what, um, and actually I just saw a, a, a bunch of artists and, and designers talking about this on, on LinkedIn, the railing against how democratizing expresses with template and theme designs that it's putting designers work in the hands of everybody in the world. I'm like, that's exactly the point. Yeah. Like, that's exactly what it does. Right. Yeah. And so now it, no, they weren't complaining that it was available. They're complaining that it's now creating more and more challenges for how to become innovative in design when the established principles to take very quick things and make them look beautiful are, you know, look, it took you what, three minutes to do that or five mm -hmm. minutes to do that, right? Whereas mm -hmm. to do that by hand would have, you know, by somebody who, even an expert would have taken 30 minutes to get, get the photo, you gotta crop the photo, you gotta pull it out and then you gotta put the layered backgrounds, right? So. Um, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. It's a fascinating conversation for me. I like it because um, I think it's great. The more the more innovative we are, and the more we can distribute that, then the more innovative we have to be. So it's oh, perpetually totally. driving the the system. But and you still need people who know really how to. There are still people who are artistically gifted in taking it in their brain and putting it on paper, yeah. and that is still always going to be needed. But it's okay to have all of this too, can't we? Yeah. It's such a, yeah, it's a relief. I start, I tell students, we start from scratch because I want them to experience the pain of doing design work, right? Um, so even when we're building like a, an actual painful. website, yeah, like uh, we use a Wix site, like Wix.com, start mm -hmm. from scratch, right? Which is funny, you have to create a template and it's called a blank template. And I'm like, mm -hmm. if it's blank, it's not a template. Yeah, what, <laughs> but, what, okay. what, 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 what? Um, you mean a layout? <laughs> but then after that, then another unit I usually do is like how to hack a template. So let's take a resume, like my business writing class. 
let's find a resume you really like. Now let's hack it so that yours doesn't look like everybody else's. Mm -hmm. Like let's manipulate the pieces. Let's change the design. Let's mm -hmm. adjust instead of a circle. Maybe it's a triangle. Let's change mm -hmm. the shape. Maybe it's geometrical, a dodecahedron. We're going to throw that in there. Like, I don't, you know, and so it becomes, um, it's a rhetorical strategy for working within the constraints or moving across the constraints. Uh, and these tools so quickly make it evident to students what the template is. Like it's, like it's so visible, like mm -hmm. you can't not deal with it. Um, even if you are working in like uh, in podcasting or any of the tools that have like templated design structures, they like audition automatically creates a podcasting interface for you. So you know Hi. which tracks go where. And I'm like, all right, but what if you have a track that's neither a host nor guest? Mm -hmm. um, well, one thing that I do with my students, I talk about the, it's interesting because it's not, it's almost as high as the power of formatting. I said, if you take this, in Excel, you take this data in Excel and it doesn't make any sense, but you format it and all of a sudden your brain can eat yep. it. Yep. Have you played with Tableau at all? What is Tableau? Tableau is, it's like a dynamic visualization tool for data sets, data engagement. <gasps> um, is it is high-end data analysis, but then it outports it in some just incredible uh, visual structures. Um, no, but now I want it. It's an, it, I mean, we have a license. You have to like sign up for it, put in the code. It's like $1,200 per, per <gasps> usage, but it, IU pays for it. Cause we, it's, oh. it's just, it's, it's not like the enterprise where you just sign in. You have to actually like trigger the license and then put in the right IU code for, so that IU pays for it. But, um, uh, yeah, there's some, there's some really cool stuff, interactive data visualizations and things like that, that are like, cause I, you know, I don't do a lot with, with like um, data or Excel right. like based based literacies, I do enough, but not a lot. And and some of the things that people can do now, because I would create the visualizations by hand. Like sure, if I knew sure, the data sure. said and I saw the Excel output, I would then make it beautiful in Photoshop, right? I would go do my own thing, um, or InDesign or, or Illustrator, depending on what we're working in. But uh, yeah, so Tableau does like automates all that. So it's another tool. I mean, I know it's an Adobe session, but it's well, all tied to the same principle, right? Like. I might really want to look at that because we talk a lot about data. You know, we have a lot of statisticians in our school yeah. and they might really want to look at that. Yeah. I got an undergrad researcher uh, who's working with me on a, on a social annotation project. And he's been using Tableau to create a, a just, just really incredible graphs and pattern recognition and distributions. And he's got them so that like they show like different segments of like students doing what and then color coded based on additive versus responsive annotations. And then it like structures across time. And it's so simple in terms of like the visualization approach, um, but it does it, it like in the system. It automate, automates it out as that kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's incredible. So anyways, yeah. we are at okay. time. I know we Sam's are... going to shut us off and kick us out. Someone else is going to show up. No, no, no. Up. <laughs> no you Be guys can as long as you want. Um, I know everyone left, but it was great meeting you both. And I really enjoyed hearing you guys talk. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you for participating. You didn't thank ask any you. questions, Sam. So I, um, I, know, I took I'm note. Never, I'm never sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought <laughs> it was really interesting. <sighs> excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, Thanks, uh, all right, Margaret. I appreciate it. Let's Let me do know it again, Justin, else. please. Yeah, I will. I'm happy to do anytime. it anytime you want. Um, let's see. Uh, you Are you coming Friday for podcasting? Adam will send out a reminder tomorrow. Okay, I think so. I think I've got a... Yeah. It's a, it's another. I'm gonna do an Adobe Rush. It's it's optional, so it's not required. Oh, then it, okay. If it's the Adobe Rush one, then I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. So. I do want. I loved your Rush one because I'm gonna put that in my class. Yeah. So we're gonna.